Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to do another shamrock t-shirt. I think this one turned out better than the first one that I tried. To begin, I'm going to fold my shirt in half and I'm going to mark the center of the shirt with a washable marker. Then I'm just going to isolate the front of the shirt. I'm only going to work with the front of the shirt for this t-shirt. I'm going to take my washable marker and I'm going to put a dot where I'd like the center of the shamrock to be. I'm going to take my protractor, put the center on my dot, Make a mark at 55 degrees. Another one at 110 degrees. And the third mark at 165 degrees. Then I'm going to draw lines out so that I have something to follow. The first mark that was at 55 degrees, I'm going to fold that top portion above that down. So I'm going to fold that underneath the shirt. The next fold I'm going to make is I'm putting my finger on the center dot and that line that was at 165 degrees, I'm going to put that on the line that I just folded. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I have one fold that went under on the 55 degrees and then the 165 degrees is lined up with that one on the underside. All I did now is just flip it over so you can see that. So there's one little portion that's left over. That's going to be the part that's going to be the stem on the shamrock. Then I'm just making the shamrock or clover shape on here. And this portion that is left over after I did my folds is going to be the stem. So I don't want to take my heart shape all the way down to the very end because all those shamrock leaves have to attach. I learned this tie from Mr. Tie-Dye who does a great job explaining this. So if you really want to learn how to do this well, look him up. He's on YouTube and he does a wonderful job explaining this. So this is one of his tie-dyes that he does. Then I'm just going to fan fold along my line And I know it's hard to see because my fingers are in the way. This is so small. When I get to the curve, I'm just going to kind of twist that portion around that's the stem and fan fold it into the leaf part. Again, Mr. Tie-Dye is your go-to to learn how to do this.
after I have it all folded, I'm going to tie it up with some kite string. My line is not completely straight, so I'm going to draw this same exact shape so that I know where to put my die on the back side of this. So you'll see me, I'm kind of flipping back and forth trying to find the exact shape of this line so that I can mimic it on the other side. rest of the shirt I'm going to scrunch. So I pick the shirt up and I put the sleeves inside one another and then I scrunch the shirt up and just use some rubber bands to hold the rest of it together. I put the shirt aside and I let it dry out all the way before I started to dye it. I'm going to use some Dharma trading colors for this shirt. The black I've thickened just a little bit and then I'm using bright green at the very end followed by new emerald green up close to the black line, citrus yellow on the other side of the black line and then for the scrunch portion I'm putting Wedgwood blue and when I run out of the Wedgwood blue that I had mixed up, I added a little bit of baby blue on the top just to make sure I got quite a bit of color on the shirt.
tried not to over dye the clover or shamrock portion. That's kind of what I did on my last one that I did. So with this one I tried not to put on quite as much dye and then I took a paper towel and kind of blotted some of it off. Kind of squished it with that paper towel to soak up some of that dye. Here's what my shamrock turned out looking like this time. Thank you guys for watching and have a happy St. Patrick's Day.